friends and welcome. So today I am wearing my Ravenclaw shirt. Yes, it's an eagle, not a raven, because we're going to talk about book recommendations based on your Hogwarts house. And in this case, we're going to start with Ravenclaw because I am a proud Ravenclaw. Can you tell that I'm a Ravenclaw? Can you? It's also the easiest house to start with, in my opinion, because we love books. And I mean, other houses appreciate good books as well, but Ravenclaws are known to be bookworms. So for today's video, I have made a top 10 of books that I think any Ravenclaw will love, and I'm very excited to share them with you. And if you like these kind of videos, then don't forget to click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you never miss a video of me again. Let's get started. People that get sorted into Ravenclaw are brainy and creative types and with creative I don't mean that we are very crafty it's more of creative with thoughts so we can think outside of the box and come up with different solutions they appreciate quirkiness think a lot of good and they have unusual interests it doesn't always have to be unusual though it can also be just a collection of books or if you're like me, you have an entire room dedicated to your fandoms. And in my case, that's 80% Wizarding World and some Star Wars and Disney stuff. I'm also really into The Witcher lately. So based on those traits, I have gathered a top 10. Let's just dive into it. These books are not in any particular order and I will just give a brief description of the book without any spoilers. First up is The Book of Two Ways by Jodi Picoult. Our main character is called Dawn Edelstein and we follow her on a quest to find her way in life. Dawn used to be be an archaeology student in Egypt. While there, C meets Wyatt Armstrong, a fellow student who C feels weirdly drawn to. Fast forward to the future, where C lives in Boston with her husband and her daughter Merit. What happens, and who would C be if C would have made a different choice in the past? So you can already tell by the description that this book is about kind of the reason of life and death, the choices that you make, and what do you leave behind when you leave this earth. So that is kind of typical of a Ravenclaw because it is a really brainy book about bigger questions than just the questions that Dawn is asking herself. Also, the first 50 pages of this book felt like a lecture about Egyptology, which is an unusual interest, and I really like that part. And there's also a big part about quantum mechanics. So I think this book is definitely the perfect balance between facts and fiction. Next up is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. It's the year 1886, and there's a mysterious traveling circus that is only open at night and is completely in black and white. It's also known as the Circus of Dreams. Some tents contain eyes, others contain clouds. And at the heart of this, because I think the circus is definitely the main character of this book, are two young magicians who have kind of a difficult relationship, Marco and Celia. Talking about creative thinking, I mean, this is the school example. This is such a magical, whimsical, dreamlike, creative story. And after reading this, I felt like I had to reread it to untangle its secrets. So I think that probably every Ravenclaw is gonna like this. Plus, it's blue. You guys, this is so weird. Almost all of the books that I picked are blue. That's freaky because I actually did pick them based on the house traits and not on color, but just like one or two of them are not blue and the rest, <laughs> rest of the books are blue. Next is Romanoff by Nadine Brands. I've chosen this one because it is the perfect blend between fantasy and history. This is a retelling of the tragic tale of the Romanoff family. I'm gonna assume that you know what happened to the Romanoffs and if you don't, read up on your history because I think that you should know what happened to them before reading this book. Because in this book, the author gives it a different spin instead of the dreadful ending that actually happened there is magic that comes into play. And the tale kind of gets retold from there, which was comforting because I knew what was gonna happen to them and I like this version better. <laughs> I mean, it's still devastating and really emotional, but there's magic. And as a true Ravenclaw, I really appreciated the author's notes because in there, he tells you what's true 
and what stretched. And there's even some discussion questions. The next book that any Ravenclaw should read is The Devil and the Dark Water by Stuart Turton. It's 1634 and a ship from the Dutch East Indies sets out on a voyage to Amsterdam. Aboard are Samuel Pips, the world's greatest detective awaiting his execution, and his bodyguard and friend Arendt Hayes, who is determined to prove his friend's innocence. As soon as the voyage begins, strange symbols appear. Livestock get slaughtered and whispers are heard in the darkness. The passengers suspect that old Tom, the devil, is in the dark water. See what they did there? <laughs> and it's up to Samuel, Aaron, and a noblewoman called Sarah to solve this mystery. The reason that a Ravenclaw will really like this book is because you are the detective. You get to know these characters, you have to find out what is happening, and then you have absolutely no clue, and at the end there's a brilliant plot twist that makes you go like, Ah, I didn't think of that. Well, at least I didn't. Maybe you did, but I didn't. So it's a mystery thriller with historical elements because you also learn a lot about life at sea. There's a focus on character dialogues and there is that brilliant plot twist. Next is House of Dragons by Jessica Clues. This story takes place in the kingdom of Etrusia where five unlikely candidates are fighting for the dragon throne. The fight consists of winning four trials, the hunt, the game, the race, and the truth. If you get Game of Thrones vibes by looking at this cover and the description that I just gave you, that's true. Combine it with the Hunger Games that's this book. The main reason I think this is a Ravenclaw book is because of the amount of questing. And every character, because there are five main characters in this book, go about these trials differently. And yes, there's also the brainy creative type. And it has dragons, but I don't know if that is necessarily a Ravenclaw thing. I think that's kind of everyone's thing. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. The main character is called Nora Seed and she is tired of life. The only thing life has ever given her is regret and misery. She attempts suicide but she ends up in the Midnight Library. A place that actually looks like a library and has a librarian but the books contain different versions of Nora's life. So a possible world in which Nora made a different decision. Before time runs out, she tries to work out her perfect life. First, it's a book about books. Do I need to say more? Also, it is about the big questions in life. Is there even such a thing as a perfect life? So it kind of makes you think about your regrets. And the third reason I think it's a Ravenclaw book is because it has many wisdoms inside. There are some really, really good life quotes in here. For example, and I'm gonna read this from my laptop, life sometimes gives you a whole new perspective by waiting around long enough for you to see it. That's some wisdom for you. Next up is a very shiny cover. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna hold it like this. It's A Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. The only reason I picked this one is because the entire story is about books. There's a library, there are librarians, there are grimoires, there are even flying books. It's all there. In this world, grimoires are kept in iron chains because some of them can, when provoked, turn into monsters. And wardens are charged to protect the kingdom from these grimoires and that is what our main character wants to be a warden. In an act of sabotage, one of the grimoires at the library where Elizabeth works is released. She tries to intervene, but in that way, she is suspected of the crime, and she is taken to the capital to face justice. She has nowhere to turn to except her sworn enemy, a sorcerer called Nathaniel Thorne, and his demonic servants. I just really, really love this book. It's a really good fantasy book, and again, it's about books and grimoires and magic, and I think any Ravenclaw can really relate to the main character, Elizabeth. The next Ravenclaw book is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Swap. We are in France and the year is 1714. We meet Addie LaRue who in her desperation makes a deal with the devil to live forever but be remembered by none. This means that when people leave the room they will have completely forgotten about Addie which makes for some really funny but also really sad 
bad situations. But then one day she meets a guy called Henry who tells her, I remember. The reason I think any Ravenclaw will like this book is because it takes you across centuries. You get to visit a lot of big cities, a lot of different places. The book is divided in different parts and each part starts with an artwork. And this artwork is somehow related to the story. And I have yet to find out if these artworks truly exist, but if they do, that's brilliant. So again, another book that has this perfect blend of myth and reality. And there's also this deeper message about life and spending time with the ones you love. And the main character, Addie, loves books. Then I've got this heavy and big book of the adventures, the complete adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And I bought this gorgeous edition. I mean, look at that. Um, in London at the British Museum, which is a very Ravenclaw thing to do. I have to confess though, apart from staring at this book because it is just so gorgeous, I have never read it. But one of my goals for 2021 is to read this, the complete, complete collection of all the Sherlock Holmes stories. And I know that this is an obvious pick and I'm probably not the first to choose this for Ravenclaw book recommendations, but it is all about brainy, witty, creative thinking. I mean, that's the embodiment of Sherlock Holmes. And I think every Ravenclaw should at least read one story of Sherlock Holmes. Like just holding this book makes me want to read it. That's how appealing it is to a Ravenclaw eye. I mean, just the key and the keyhole and just the way the book is shaped. My gosh. Okay, let's put this down and let's show you guys the last book in my Ravenclaw book recommendations. And the final Ravenclaw book recommendation is Master of One by Jada Jones and Denny Bennett. This is honestly one of the best young adult slash new adult fantasy books I have read in a while. The story starts off with Rax, who is a bastard thief that lives in the gutters. And he's imprisoned for robbing the gutter king's underground vault. So Rax expects to be punished, but then instead he is recruited by Morian the Last, a powerful sorcerer who forces him to steal six fey relics. To get to the first fey relic, Rax has to infiltrate this old fey stronghold called the Lone Tower. To his amazement, the relic turns out to be a person. And the story kind of evolves from there. The reason I think this is a Ravenclaw book is because it has quirky characters with unusual interests and powers. There's magic, there are same-sex relationships, and there's a fair amount of questing. It just all fits together like a big puzzle, including the six fey relics. And there are mechanical pets, which is awesome. So definitely a book that I can recommend to any Ravenclaw. And that was my top 10 of Ravenclaw book recommendations. If you have any other book recommendations, please leave them in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and let's see you touch.